welcome to another rainy North Carolina day while we have blue skies and the sun shining. Today we're going to be inside and we're going to show you part two of our bathroom remodeling and the last part of the demolition we started with you last week. We hope you're going to enjoy this episode as we show you exactly how you need to do this yourself if you so choose and save a lot of money in the process while you enjoy it and your sweat equity adds value to your house and enjoyment to your daily living. We love having you with us for this uh, journey and let us know what you would like to see, what you would like for us to cover that might help you complete your own DIY products, be it renovation or building furniture or doing electrical work or automotive work or whatever we show you in this channel. We're going to be very happy to accommodate you so leave us a moment behind below and let's start interacting thank you good morning evening afternoon whatever time you're watching our video and welcome to the urban home study channel and to our new bathroom here is our brand new vanity how you like the size you say we're going to make it look bigger right i mean that looks a much bigger bathroom doesn't it yeah clearly it's... we're joking of course this is not our bathroom but this is our vanity was delivered and this is going to go to our to our remodel so wanted to start with that and if you would like to know how we did that stick around this is going to be a very fun episode our demolition is complete as you can see and uh, we are ready in this room to start building but in the other room we still need to remove the vanity and this is what we hope to achieve today we hope to be able to remove the vanity and have no surprises like we did with the plumbing in the shower area so as always we're going to show you everything we did so you can do it yourself. So we already have disconnected the supply lines and the next step will be to disconnect the plastic drain lines. So nothing will be holding the, the faucet and the sink to the vanity other than uh, more than likely, I hope just silicone. So our next step is to remove the plastic pipes that take away the dirty water and get rid of it. Now this is usually not a hard proposition, but remember in this house, these pipes have been here for about 30 years or even more. So they're a little bit stuck. We do not need to use any tools here. Using our hand usually allows them to come free. And as you can see here, it's a little harder for us, but in general, in a newer construction, it's even easier. Also in a newer construction, you will not see that mixture of uh, plastic and uh, metal rings, as you see here. That was much more common in the older days than it is now. In any case, be prepared. Have a little bucket. There will be some spillage here. And in general, this is kind of nasty water. A lot of things are kept in the trap. So be prepared that you're going to get a little bit of nastiness happening. It is truly a matter of patience. Be slow and methodical and it will work out for you. Do not worry about it. As you can see here, by being persistent, we're able, able to remove that uh, pipe and separate it from the uh, exposure system. These pipes may allow sewer gases to escape into your house. So unless you're able to immediately cap them, it is very important that you're going to put a rug or some other substance to close them. And also a Ziploc bag secured by a rubber band that will allow your house to not be exposed to sewer gases as you see us doing here now if you can immediately put the new pipes on and, and close the system this is not necessary but in the vast majority of the cases this is something that you're going to have to do in order to ensure that no sewer gases escape into your living space it is a fairly simple and straightforward process that must be done having separate separated all the plumbing from the sink and from the faucet it is now to remove the sink from the rest of the cabinet. In most cases, when the sink sits on top of the cabinet, like you see here, it is usually only adhered to the cabinet using some silicone. And what you see us doing here using the five-in-one tool is break that silicone uh, seal so we can remove and uh, discard this uh, specific sink. So we're scoring it all around as much as we can and that should cap the, the sealant. If you had an under cabinet uh, sink, then there are going to be clips underneath it that hold it and you have to remove those clips before you can separate the two. In any case, this is usually not a difficult proposition. And again, with a little bit of time and patience, you're going to achieve excellent results in separating your sink from your cabinet and be able to continue with your innovation. The 5-in-1 tool is invaluable here and absolutely necessary. As you can see, as soon as we can make a little bit of an opening, 
we're starting peeling the, the sink apart and be careful here, especially if you want to reuse the specific sink. In our case, we're not going to reuse the sink, so it is not critical to are careful, but we want to show you exactly how you do it in case you want to preserve the sink. As soon as you get under the sink, it actually becomes fairly straightforward and you can lift it from that point on just carefully. Tell me what you're doing. You can hold it here with your fingers. Can you help me please? I don't know how to help you. And this is a porcelain sink so it is kind of uh, weighty. Mm -hmm. Now that is done and now we, we we are not i would try to save this usually we do but really not no. we don't waste that on any so that's actually it goes to the go. dumpster as you can see having a dumpster is very valuable as this specific thing is too bulky and too heavy to go with the normal truss and often they will leave it behind so by being able to get all of the debris of the demolition cleanly out of the house and away taken away is a very very positive thing that will be very useful to any renovation project the next step is to demolish and remove the cabinet, which in our case is semi-built in. So we're going to start to look around and see what is the best way to do it. And using the five-in-one tool, we're cutting any paint or silicone or glue that might connect the, the top of the cabinet to the drywall. That is an important step to take in order for you to be able to cleanly move the, the cabinet top without doing any damage to the drywall. Avoiding damage to the drywall will make your life easier and will make your project go faster because it will minimize the amount of repairs you have to do before you can move on to the next step, which is paint. Cutting the top is not strictly necessary, but since we're not going to reuse this top and also the material is actually very cheap and not cannot be used for anything else, we decided to go ahead and cut it because it doesn't give us any advantage not to do so. Here is where the jigsaw became the jigsaw, I'm sorry, the, the receipt saw became an invaluable tool. So we cut through and that allows us enough space to be able to maneuver the top and make the removal process a little bit easier without having to worry about damaging the wall. Again, preserving the drywall is important because we are not planning to replace the drywall, but rather re repair it if we have to do any damage and then paint over it. And as you can see, cutting it allows us to very easily start removing the top of the cabinet and also expose the carcass of the cabinet to give us an idea on exactly what we need to do next so we can remove it completely from the wall and be able to insert our new cabinet after we repair the walls and lay down the flooring in our new bathroom. Everything proceeded very well so far and we have not had any surprises, thankfully, unlike what we did the weeks before. We have some obstacles to clear that make it a little difficult, specifically an outlet that you're going to see on the right side. So we're cutting another piece off the top. Again, there is nothing we can do with this top. It's really compressed particle board and totally worthless. But by cutting it through, will allow us a little more space to manipulate the top and easily remove it without having to worry at all about any additional damage. So we did cut it, as you can see here, and we tried to remove it, but unfortunately, we had a little more uh, work to do. It was not really hard. We just have to manipulate it, but I did not want to touch and damage that receptacle that you kind of see in the corner. A relief cut here will make it easier to remove the top, and that's what we're doing. And this tool was a tool that we purchased at $79 additional cost because our original oscillating tool was simply not strong enough big job. It was overheating and it was very, very slow in the cut. By cutting a relief here will allow this weak point to become even weaker and so we'll be able to break off the top with ease without having to worry about any damage. <laughs> you say, I don't think I can get this, and then it just disintegrates. Horrible quality. It's all particle board. So we were going to get a different oscillating blade to cut through that, and then a professor here got impatient because that never happens. Sorry. And we destroyed it, so there you go. So now we are just gonna work on deconstructing the box. So we may not need to construct. What we have discovered is that there are nails. We've just used a couple of play here, here, and so we're gonna try to take a pry bar to get under there with the nails and hope slide out without us having to. There's one final piece of a backsplash. We're coming off the wall here. Able to get this pry bar underneath it. Remember the other one had nails, so be careful. Mm -hmm. And then 
indeed there are some nails there. So let's get rid of all the... So this is a slow process, but we are chugging along. Is that the right term? Sure. What's the English one? There's a channel I've been watching that they do a crack on. That's what it is. That's not Australian? No, he's English. It's crack Br on. It's British dude? Yeah. It's a very cool channel where they've been, um, it's, I think it's called the Petherix. They've mm. been uh, uh, rehabilitating an old convent and also a chateau. Okay. Nice little plug for them there. I find their videos very interesting. That will not come out yet, really, because of the nails on the back. Because of many layers of paint, scoring between the surfaces and the wall is a great idea that will enhance your ability to remove things and also ensure that you will not pull the drywall or the paint and causing additional damage that will cause you additional work in order to make it look as good as you want it to look. So score everything before you start removing it and you're going to get with a much, much better result in the end. This is an old cabinet and as a result it has a, a steel rail on the top of the drawer that allows the drawer to move up and down without having any side support. This keeps the front and the back connected in this instance and does not allow us to take it apart. So we're going to use a little precursive persuasion to remove those so we can finally take the, the cabinet apart with ease. Again, these are not things we can reuse and they're not going to be for use to anyone. So we are not concerned about preserving them. But if there is something you would like to preserve, you need to be much more careful in how you remove it. So you can either donate it or use it again. In this instance, it doesn't make any difference for us if this is going to get damaged or not, because they do not make them this way anymore. And I don't think even if I was to donate them, they would find a good use in any analysis home. So we do not mind that we're going to destroy them. And when you do this demolition, find the way that works the best for you and will allow you to do it in the, in the fastest way with the least amount of damage to your finished surfaces and to your final project. That is all you need to care about. Okay. It is not only easier, but infinitely faster if you cut things. And for building cabinets like this one, all my, normally there is no other way to do it. They are nailed to the walls and they are nailed to each other in such a way that removing them as one piece is unfortunately not an option that we have in this instance. But in either case, if you can save something, even the wood save it. But here I could not find any use for any of the wood or any of the hardware. So cutting everything off gave us the ability to finish this in much quicker time frame. And at the same time, do the least amount of damage that we have to repair as we start rebuilding the bathroom. As you can see, the correct tools really are invaluable in a process like this. And so far in this project, we have found that a reciprocating saw and an oscillating tool gave us the greatest uh, ability to make the demolition quick and painless. We also have to use, of course, screwdrivers and hammers. Uh, the hammer is a great tool to take nail apart when surfaces are nailed, but it is not necessary again. Keep a safe workplace by moving things out of your way as you demolish, so you're not going to get injured. There are a lot of nails in these pieces and you can easily get cut or punctured if you do not take care and not remove them out of the immediate area that you are working. So be careful and be safe in everything you do and you're going to do fine. As you can see, the cabinet is almost about demolished and we're getting very close to the end of being ready to see the walls behind the cabinet and see if there's any serious damage that we have to repair or anything else. Additionally, we see here that there has not been any leaks or water damage through the years something that you're always concerned in a water in a remodel of a bathroom. I'm very happy that we do not have anything to worry about in this instance and hopefully the floor will be in great shape and we will not need to redo the floor. But if we do then we're going to deal with that as we must. Usually the beginning of the demolition is the hardest part and the part that takes the longest amount of time. As you can see as we move along things have sped up and we are approaching the end of our demolition phase. Here we're trying to move the back plus area where it was attached to the wall and I was not paying attention and I did not notice that there was no stud behind where Mrs. DIY was trying to remove the wall or from the wall and we actually did a little bit of damage. That is okay, we're going to actually repair that and it will be behind the back plus anyway so it doesn't have to be perfect. But most certainly we're going to do everything right and we're going to fix it. Mishaps like that will happen and do not let them discourage you. It is really not a big deal and do not really let them become a reason why you do not try, you do not try uh, self-renovations. Things like that happens to everyone. As you can see here, the oscillating tool is just amazing in, in going, making quick work 
out of cutting this uh, piece of fab, uh, I'm not sure what it is, it's not solid wood, more than likely it's plywood, but it's doing a great, great job cutting it and it has been an invaluable tool in our demolishing our bathroom. Again, this is a tool we did buy and it costed $79 with a battery and very, very pleased, far superior to the tool that we had before that was a Dremel and simply was not powerful enough or even fast enough to do the job and was overheating horribly every time we were trying to use it. Okay, first side panel is out. No major injuries or minor injuries or injuries at all for that matter. Mm -hmm. To the next side. Yeah. It was a twofer. Nice. So Perfect. now that that had the side panel's out, the bottom is free. It sounds like it looks free. Watch those nails. Yeah. yeah. Um, let me take these outside. And I see it. So where the nails are is actually where the stud leveraged this a little bit better. So now we have no nails. One last nail over in the corner. The nails stay for long. And the 5-in-1 tool is earning its keep today. So the mirror is just attached with a couple of screws and some glimpses at the bottom, we hope. We hope that they have not glued it in the back, but in either case it has to come out. If they've glued it, it will make more work for us, but the mirror has to go. And as you can see, that's how the little screw looks before we start removing it. If any of you is... Uh, oh, I but how I will avoid you guys? We're wearing masks. So if any of you is superstitious, look away. We're about to cause you 13 years of bad luck. Seven. Seven. One. And it didn't break. Yay! We missed the set of the century. So the distraction is complete. The mirror is gone. The vanity is gone. Now we're starting the exciting part of start making positive things, right? Positive change. In fact, the only thing we need to remove is the linoleum. So there's still a little bit of right, but happen. Not like this. Well. This was the main distraction. So the next step will be we need to do a little bit of clean, clean up. Do another little uh, shopping trip. Strip, trip. Strip trip. Because we need some material to start the repair. So this part is coming up pretty easy because uh, there was some water damage there. It was done. So now we're getting He's 30 years yeah. old. Yeah, so we're getting started with pulling up this old linoleum. Uh, and this is going to be the last bit of our destruction for the construct coming. Yep. Now we're officially done with the demolition. The linoleum is gone. Mrs. DIY took care of that. And uh, the exciting part can finally begin. And this is for real this time. Because we said that previous segment too. For real, reals? For real. Okay. This is DIY? Yes. What was the most challenging linoleum removal? Um, probably in the closet. Okay. Where it didn't receive a lot of traffic, so it was very intact. And uh, the trim was a bear as well. Excellent. So overall, because of the age of the linoleum, it was reasonably easy to remove though. Mm -hmm. That's one plus, right? The glue had deteriorated enough that we could pull it off with the exception of some spots, right? And we use a tool that we really like. We're not uh, really sponsored by that. And how did you enjoy this, Mrs. DIY? It's effective. This is designed, you see it says floor. This is designed to remove linoleum and carpet. And it has a, a nice hook and that allows you to do it easier than a normal straight knife. And Mrs. DIY gave it run for its money because she bent it. I meant right. it. Yeah. She meant it. <laughs> so now we need to do like a, a run to the store to buy some more supplies to start hopefully rebuilding what we took apart. So the last thing we have to do before we go to the store is actually uh, measure the thickness of the subfloor because there was no subfloor in the under the surround. And the way we do that, like one in. That's a full in, really? Try it in a couple of spots and make sure it's consistent. It's not swollen. It's as flat as it can go. Yeah. A bit of damage on the subfloor. And we're going to remove what looks like a couple of three inches, right? Yeah. And we're just marking it to make a straight line. We're, using, we're going to use our oscillating tool to cut this piece off. 
you want that as straight as possible because the, the new subfloor is going to butt to it. Mm -hmm. I'm a little surprised that for the age for the house they used OSB here. It really should be plywood or, I'm sorry, not OSB, particle board. It really should be OSB or... The oscillating tool is the absolutely perfect tool to remove layers of flooring and separate them from each other. We would not have been able to do it with our old tool because it would have overheated in about the tenth of the time we needed to use the tool. You can plant cut through it and then when you put it at an angle you can make very quick cuts and very quick progress. This took but a few minutes and while you can do it with a circular saw the potential for damaging the part of the floor you don't want to damage is much higher with a circular saw than it is with the oscillating tool. It is an invaluable tool to have and we're going to use it again when we're laying tile because we're going to have to trim the trim around the doors in order for the tile to feel flush underneath it. So, very well used tool for us. Make sure you go deep enough and also one of the cool things about this tool is that you can change direction and can cut as easily and you can reach even very tight corners. Now, once we were done, we tried to remove the, the piece but it had a little bit of damage because it was uh, it got wet. This is where our old sour ended. So it starts falling apart and we need to make a nice little cleaner cut from it. The black stuff as you're going to start seeing here is actually tar paper, very similar to what we still use on roofs under shingles to protect them from moisture, protect the underlayment from moisture. That was very commonly used in bathrooms in the past, but today we have replaced that with plastic membranes that do a much better job. In any case, we're going to leave it under the part of the floor that we're going to tile over, but we are replacing the other part of the floor with uh, a PVC, not PVC, with plastic membrane that will make it watertight, will avoid any additional damage below. In all honesty, it did a great job. While you can see a lot of water damage here in that piece of wood we removed, anything underneath remained dry and it's very structurally sound. So even though primitive in construct, it did meet its purpose and it did not allow any more damage below it from water. And the reason we had a little bit water intrusion in this area is because it was towards the edge of our surround shower and the bottom was leaking somewhere because it was not very well uh, sealed. But other than that, it has been, I was been very surprised how well this bathroom has held on for after 30 years of usage in a very, very wet area. And I, I can see that, I, I wouldn't say they were doing it better the old days, but they did know what they were doing, even without having the, the very modern and cooler advancements in understanding how to waterproof things and how to do things. So we're done cutting the previous subfloor and now we're going to be ready to bring our new subfloor and put it down. So the next step is coming up. So today we accomplished quite a lot. We cleared the floors from the uh, vinyl, no it's called, yeah vinyl, right? Vinyl, linoleum, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, flooring. Pla plastic floor. And we're getting ready to start uh, tiling. We removed the uh, vanity from here, mm -hmm. and which the was the main goal for the day. And the mirror. Mm -hmm. and the mirror and while you were not looking last week we finished the we redid the, the plumbing mm -hmm. so now we are ready to start putting things back together so we're back from uh, the store and uh, we're going to stop for this episode here we have all the supplies we need minus a couple of things that are coming through the mail to complete our project but in the meantime Mrs. DIY Alpida, uh, how was this the end of the demolition, part de of demolition? What did we learn? What Any surprises? It was fairly difficult to get started with getting the vanity out, but eventually, you know, once we got part of it, then the rest of it followed pretty easily. So now we're ready and from this point forward, it will look, things will start looking better because right now they look worse than they were before, which is normal in any renovation project, right? You, things get ugly and then things get good. I would say at this level we are at would you say four days of work yeah, we didn't work as much as we wanted because of the plumbing problem but this is an achievable result at four, in four days of work and hopefully things will move much faster from this point forward and hopefully in our next episode we're going to show, be showing you the finished project so stick around for that very we're very excited about it from professor diy mrs diy and Elpida, let's build something together